My name is Kishwani. S K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems, GRE math problems, out of this book here. The official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 47. Lesson number 47 out of the third edition. Third edition, day 47. The problem that we're about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 255. Please turn to it. On page number 255, on page number 255, the problem, the example that is presented to us as 2.8.5. 2.8.5. Listen, listen, listen very carefully, please. It deals with parabola. It deals with parabola. They appear all the time in the exam. Unfortunately, the book only gives one example there. We are going to do probably three or four. So we're going to name them A, B, and C. So here we go. This, this being the first one, 2.8.5A, which is the same one as, as, as the one that you see in the book. B, C, if we do anything extra, of course they're not in the book. Here's what the problem says. It says, for the given parabola, here's the equation that is given to us. For the given parabola, y is equal to x squared minus 2x minus 3. Our job, it says, find its, our job is to find its x-intercept, y-intercept, the intercept is misspelled here, the line of symmetry, and its vertex. Let's get going. Let's get going. x-intercept, y-intercept, and is vertex. Well, if you have a parabola here, and assuming that it has x-intercept, x-intercept being here, as opposed to parabola that is lying here, it doesn't, it's not going to have any x-intercept, or something like that, or something like that, it's not going to have x-intercept, but here, assuming that it has x-intercept, at that point, y is equal to 0. y is equal to 0. So that's what we're going to do. To find the x-intercept, we're going to set this equation, y is equal to x squared minus 2x minus 3 equal to 0, and just solve this equation. Simple quadratic equation, we're going to factorize it. We're looking for two numbers whose product has to be negative 3, and they have to add up to negative 2, which is very simple. The two numbers that we're looking for are negative 3x and the positive 1x. Negative 3 and a positive 1 is going to give us product of negative 3, and when you add them up, negative 3x and a positive one x is going to give us negative 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. This is too elementary. I shouldn't have to explain that to you. Let's take out x common here. If we take out x as a common factor from the first two, these two terms, we end up with x minus 3. And from here, there is nothing common between x and a negative 3. Well, then there is nothing common. We just take out 1. And it just remains x minus 3 is equal to 0. And again, from here and from here, we have x minus 3 as a common factor. We take it out, x minus 3 and x plus 1 is equal to 0. And that's your y. And there you go. We have our x-intercept. X-intercepts are going to be positive 3. When y is going to be 0, y is going to be 0 when x is equal to 3. Because 3 minus 3 is 0. It doesn't matter what's, what the rest of the story is. 3 minus 3 is going to be 0. So x-intercept is going to be x equal to positive 3 and x equal, x equal to positive 3 that's when y is going to be 0 and x equal to negative 1 there we go we've done it we have found the x-intercept positive 3 and a negative 1 simple enough let's do the line of symmetry how do we go about finding the line of symmetry so now we know I shouldn't have done the work here because that's where I usually plot the picture so I'm going to erase it we're done with it now we know, oh, we can do it here if you like. So we know it's positive 3 and a negative 1. X-intercepts are positive 3. 1, 2, 3, right here is the x-intercept, and a negative 1 right here. And again, in all, rea in, in, in all reality, of course, during the exam, you shouldn't have to plot it out like this to be able to see it. We should be able to see immediately that from negative 1 to positive 3, from negative 1 to positive 3, we have 4 units, which means the line of symmetry is going to be exactly in the middle, which is why it's called symmetry, because it has to be symmetric. 2 units from here, 2 units from here, that's your line of symmetry. At that point, 
x is equal to positive 1. Very good, we just answered the second part. What's the line of symmetry? The equation of the line of symmetry, the equation of the line of symmetry is x is equal to positive 1. That's the line of symmetry. The line of symmetry is x is equal to positive 1. Let's find the y-intercept. Y-intercept. How do we find y-intercept? Y-intercept is when x is equal to 0, which is very simple. Here is our equation. x squared minus 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. Y-intercept is very simple. When we put x is equal to 0, y is simply 0 squared minus 2 times 0 minus 3 is simply negative 3. So y-intercept, I'm going to correct the spelling here. Intercept. I left out the t. The y-intercept, or rather one, there is only one, one intercept. Y-intercept is simply x is equal to, rather, y is equal to negative 3. y is equal to negative 3, somewhere here. 1, 2, 3, right here is the x-intercept. Or rather, what? That's the y-intercept, sorry. That's the y-intercept. It cuts the y-axis. It cuts the y-axis right here. We still haven't answered this last part, vertex. We know it cuts to here. We know it, it looks like this. So it looks, it looks something like this. This is our parabola. Let me put it in a different color. Just to make it stand out a little bit. The last question we, to, we need to answer is, what are the coordinates of this point right here? That's our vertex. That's our vertex. question is, what are the coordinates of it? Well, it's very simple. We already know the x-coordinate of vertex. x-coordinate is right here, x plus 1. x-coordinate is 1, right here. That's why it's line symmetry. This is a line of symmetry here. Whole line of symmetry obviously because the parabola is symmetric is the mirror image x is equal to 1 well how do you find the y coordinates very simple if you want to find the y coordinates of the vertex put in x equal to 1 in the equation and find out what the value of what the corresponding value of y is that's that's how simple it is y we know is equal to x squared minus 2x minus 3 we put in the coordinates of uh, x coordinate of uh, x uh, x x coordinate uh, value of x in this equation 1 squared minus 2 times 1 minus 3 1 squared is 1 1 minus 2 is going to be negative 1 looks like negative 4 looks like negative 4 so that's it coordinates of vertex are positive 1 and negative 4 that's it the very last part we're going to do is something that is, I don't believe they're asking in the book. I'm not sure. Maybe they do talk about it. The last part that we're going to do is, so we can feel, we can clearly see, listen very carefully, we can clearly see that this parabola is shifted one unit to the right and four units down. One unit to the right and four units down. The question is, can you present to that, can, can you present that idea of how the parabola, how a given parabola is shifted in the form of an equation where visually one can look at the equation with a, with a mere visual inspection one can tell where the parabola is sitting, how it is shifted, how many units to the left, uh, how, left or right and how many uh, units is shifted up or down. How do we do that? How do we present that in the form of an equation without actually having to show it visually? Well this is how we do it. So we're going to call it part five, which is not here, which is which is simply the process is called completing the square. You're going to complete the square, and you're going to see that the equation that we get at the end, equation that we get at the end, is going to present to us the same exact idea that we're seeing here. Same exact, uh, it's going to manifest the same exact fact that we see here, which is that this parabola shifted one unit to the right and four units down which is why the, the coordinates of his vertex are positive 1 and negative 4. Let's do this, shall we? Here's our equation. It says y is equal to x squared minus 2x. Actually, this is going to be very simple because it's already pretty much 
in, a, in a complete uh, in a square form. So x squared minus 2x minus 1 plus 1. What, what does it do? This is what it does. This, this is what it does. Think of our x is a, a squared minus 2a, a x is a. This is our b, 2ab plus b squared, b squared being the 1. And now the square is complete. Now the square is complete. It is a complete square, which means it, and we know, we know that a squared minus 2ab plus b squared is simply a minus b whole squared. A is x, so it's just going to be x, and b is 1, so it's going to be right here. In other words, all of this can be written as x minus 1 whole squared. x minus 1 whole squared. But we have a problem. The problem is that we can't just leave it like this. It, x squared is right here, minus 2 times x times 1, which is right here, 2x. But here we have positive 1, the given quantity is negative 3. The given quantity is negative 3. So what we need to do is put down the negative 3. Let me put it in a different color. We're going to put down the negative 3 that is given to us, that was originally given to us. And now, at the end, we have to undo what we did here. We introduced the positive 1 here. This wasn't there. We introduced it. We have to undo it. That positive 1 cancels out this negative 1. Positive 1 and negative 1 kill each other. And we are left with the same quantity that was given to us originally, which is x squared minus 2x minus 3 because this positive 1 would negative. So this all of this I don't want to put it in the wrong. So all of this quantity that you see here from here up until here is this right here. And now we have to take care of the last two quantities which is negative 3 and a negative 1. A negative 3 and a negative 1 is simply negative 4. Aha! What do you suppose we see? Right here. Y is equal to, I'm going to rewrite it, x minus 1 whole squared minus 4. This tells us that the parabola has shifted one unit to the right. This negative part, negative one unit shows here that is shifted, shifted one unit to the right and negative 4 shows us that it is shifted four units down which is exactly what we saw here. The difference between this approach and this approach is that this approach shows us uh, the fact visually, graphically that is, and this approach shows us the same fact mathematically or algebraically if you like. Do you understand? Without having to plot the graph. That was it. As I said before in the beginning of the video, I don't want to just do one example because that's in my opinion it's not enough. We're going to probably do two or three more. So as we go along, depending on how, how what sort of mood I am in, we're just going to keep numbering them. This is this is what we're calling part A. We're going to move on. In the next video, we'll do the same same exact same exact type of problem, part B, part C, and so on and so forth. And probably most likely we'll stop at either part C or part D, and then we'll move on to a different topic. Do you understand? See you tomorrow. Okay. Bye now. By the way, if you are interested in uh, getting a one-to-one -one tutoring, one-to-one -one help, you can get hold of me at this phone number or that 1-800-808-PREP uh, or prepsat at aol.com. Send me an email. Uh, if you're interested in being tutored by me, I'll provide you one-to-one -one tutoring online uh, via Skype or FaceTime or whatever you like, one-to-one. Uh, -one. Just get hold of me, send me an email, and we'll see what we can do for you. Okay? Bye now.